This will apply to all of you. I'm unofficial. I'm unofficially under 60. Are you? 76. <laughs> all right. Well, biologically, yes. Uh, chronologically, no, we're over. In any case, so Medicare, and pardon me, many of you will know many of these things, but I want to make sure we're all on the same page. So I'm going to start with the basics. So there's four parts to Medicare. There's part A for hospitalization and the related services. Part B for the medical doctors and related services. There's a part C that I'll mention in a second. And part D for prescription drug coverage. Uh, part C combines the hospital, the doctor, and the prescription drug coverage into one. And this was an experiment. Uh, how many remember when Bill and Hillary Clinton were in office? Remember that? One, two, long ago. Well, they had an idea, someone had an idea, that there's a lot of fraud in Medicare. Almost $20 billion, they estimated at that time. It's quite a bit more now. Are there some ways to cut fraud? And they had the idea, well, let's outsource Medicare to a private insurance company as a test and see if they can do it more efficiently. So they came up with the idea. What They had the big brain actuaries look at the numbers of the amount of people that are on Medicare and the dollars spent and divided the number of people into that. They came up with about $800 a month. So that's what the government es estimates they spend to take care of someone on Medicare. And wouldn't it be nice if they gave us the $800 a month to handle our own affairs? They don't. So what they did, they, that's their calculation, so they decided to pay a private insurance company about $800 to handle and administer Medicare. So in other words, if you were to sign up for Medicare Advantage, United Healthcare or Aetna or Humana or this year Blue Cross and Blue Shield is coming out with one, that company will get $800 a month on your behalf. And in return, they put together a package of benefits that is actually at least as good as Medicare. It has to be legally as good as A and B. It's better. They add dental, vision, hearing. They have very good cost containment. And the end result is the experiment that started under Bill and Hillary Clinton has expanded to about 38 million Americans in the United States. It's called Medicare Advantage. Now, <clears throat> The decision people have each year now, because we have something called an annual election period, where you're given the opportunity to make changes without medical questions if you want to go to Medicare Advantage. Um, you may also go to a Medicare supplement. And the way I help people is, and I've sat with over 2,000 families in the last 40 years. Gosh, I'm getting older. But anyway. Um, and just going over their circumstances, mostly retirement planning. And what I'm finding is that there's uh, simple tools that can be very helpful. And I'll show you the tools that I use. If someone comes and they sit with me in my office, and they're over 65, so <clears throat> first tool, um, I like to explain Medicare supplements first. Medicare supplements have been around, and this is where I got started with insurance many years ago and helping people. And when I started, it was really simple. Um, I worked with Bankers Life and Casualty, and they had a Consumer Reports article that said Bankers was the best supplement. So I just show up, show people that, they sign up. You know, Medicare was just too complicated. They didn't want to figure it out. They just wanted the best one. Well, it changed. There's a lot of competition today, as you know from your mail, you're constantly getting bombarded and with TV advertisements, radio, and mail about Medicare supplements. And phone calls. Yeah. <laughs> and so what I would do if someone wants to, they perhaps they're already a client, they just want to come in and sit down and review, then we're going to take a look if they have a supplement, and let's say it's a 70-year-old female. Non-tobacco, Plan F is no longer available unless you already have it. And Plan G, the difference being Plan F, no deductibles, no co-pays. They got rid of it. The idea was, well, somebody could have a crush on their doctor and go every other week, and we're going to pay for everything. So they said, no, we want some skin in the, pocket, in the game. We're, if people uh, are going to go see their doctor, we want them to at least, there should be some deductible or copay or something. So Plan G 
has a deductible of about $200. Um, it's 198 I think, this year. might be 202 But the end result is once you pay it, you're done for the year. And it makes it pretty simple. Now, most people are going to see their doctor once or twice, and then they don't have to worry about any more medical bills. It's great as long as you can afford it. And right now, the prices are reasonably affordable, but let's take a look. They do change each year. So we have a low 9877 Heartland. I'm licensed with them, but they're not that well known, and generally people like to go with something a little bit more solid that they've heard of. Um, Humana, Aetna, Bankers. Do you have a figure on how big Heartland is compared to yours? Pardon me? How big? Do you, do you have any idea what their, what their assets are compared to yours? The others are small. Huge. They're very small. And there is more risk because one large claim of a million dollars could cause everyone's rates to go up. If you've got a really big group, a million dollars is a drop in the bucket. It's a little bit more stable, the larger company. Yes, Rick? You know, what, what website is this? This is a quote tool for brokers that are licensed. I don't know that you'd be able to get it, but there are other ways that you can look into it. So, in any case, this is, and you can come to my office and I'm happy to pull it up You can shop for it. And there may be a way to get to it on the internet, something somewhere, but I'm not familiar with it. So, let's take a look. Just to give you an idea, now, the most well-known company is going to be Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Well, how do they rate right now? And we have to go down for ways to find them. Blue Cross is very good, but it's exactly the same coverage. And how are you as a client going to know well, which company offers the best service and are you going to have to wait longer on the phone with one or the other? That's kind of where you rely on me to help figure out which company is going to give you the most solid uh, coverage. But we're still looking here. Where did Blue Cross? There we are. 150.40. Uh, and then if you're uh, a standard rating, meaning you smoke or have some other issues, is 207. Now 150.40 compared with uh, I mean that is pretty well known. 105. That's a pretty big difference, wouldn't you, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Uh, per month. Uh, and all of these companies do go up every year. And the reason being, as people get older, they do have more claims. Kind of like your car, when you uh, have 100,000 miles, it starts to get more service. And like that, as we get over 65, we tend to go see the doctor more than we did. So shopping for a uh, supplement now, it's not as easy as opening up your mail and getting a letter from Physicians Mutual saying you need to buy our plan. It's kind of a good idea to take a look at the rates and see how they're doing. Now, you do have a little bit of a challenge if you wanted to change from one supplement to the next. Each company for Medicare supplements will ask medical questions, and they're not all the same medical questions. Some companies are a little different. They're generally similar. And the end result is, as long as you haven't had heart attack, stroke, cancer, or diabetes, you've got a pretty good chance you could change to a lower-priced plan. Yeah. Do you know if, uh, since I had cancer in 2011 and, and cured it myself There's three times, is there, a, is there a, oh, is it forever? No, that's really good news. There's a two-year look back with most oh, companies. No problem. And as see, long as you're no You can look back as far as you want, because I never saw a doctor. All right. So as long as you're not currently being treated, okay. now if you're still taking medications for the cancer, that can be an issue with some companies. So we have a look at more details, but generally two years is as far as they go back on this. And so that's on the supplement. So again, from a simple point of view, the choices for most people after 65 are going to be a supplement or a Medicare Advantage. The supplements, you do kind of want to shop for price, um, as well as you want a larger company, it's going to be more stable. And then for the Medicare Advantage, let's go back. John, I'm, I'm a little confused about one basic thing here. Uh -huh. This this 105 whatever, is that in addition to what you're already paying for Medicare? A great question. Medicare A, 
Part A doesn't cost anything as long as you had worked for I mean, 10 quarters. Part B. And most people have. Otherwise, you can buy into it, but it could cost you five, six hundred bucks a month. Most people have worked that, ten, uh, excuse me, 40 quarters, 10 count, 10 years, and then you qualify automatically for Part A, and you don't have to pay anything. For Part B, there's a charge that's based on your income, and if you're single and making under 85,000, that's indexed, it might be a little bit higher now, as a single, or 170,000 as a couple. Then you have a standard Part B rate, which is going up each year. Arnie, what is it now? It's gone up to Part B of Medicare. It's 150. You have to look it up. Yeah, it keeps changing yeah. each year. Mine's about 148. It's gone up so Now it's like 155 or so. And it will continue to go every year since it's been in existence 30 years ago. It's gone up. And it will continue to go up. It's how the government helps to apparently pay for Medicare, but they're not doing a very good job. They're kind of going in the other direction. And when I'm doing financial planning and people talk about, well, we, we're going to get Social Security the rest of our life. Yes, you are. But the problem is these cost increases for Social Security, one, two, and this year it'll probably be five or six percent based on inflation. Uh, the government gives with one hand and takes with the other. Your Part B premium, in my opinion, will go up proportionately. So whatever you come ahead on your Social Security, they're going to take it back when they charge you your Part B premium. That's just a fact of life that we have to get used to. And I've got charts to show it to you at some point if you want to see how that works. But the end result is A, free, B, you're um, paying a premium unless you're continuing to work with your company. In which case, your company may have you on their group health insurance plan, even though you're beyond 65, in which case if they have more than 25 employees, you won't have to pay your Medicare Part B premium as long as you stay on the group plan and you're still entitled to an open enrollment period, even though you're beyond 65, later when you leave your employment, you're given a window of about 60 days to get on a Medicare supplement or a Medicare Advantage plan, as if it's your open enrollment. You say either or, are they pretty much the same? The difference between Medicare Advantage and Medicare Supplement, no, they're quite different and we're going to go into that. So on the supplement side, you have A, paid for, you don't have to pay for it, it covers hospital and related services, B, physicians and related services, you do pay for, we'll call it 150 a month, and then you have a choice, you can stay with A and B. Some people do. It's because they haven't been educated, in my opinion. There's an upgrade without extra charge than being on just A and B. So they need to at least find out about it. So A, B, you got your Part B premium, 150 a month, and then you can either supplement it with a Medicare supplement, like we just looked at, that will take care of your deductibles and co-pays. And I didn't go into all the choices, we don't have enough time, but there, in addition to Plan G, there's a Plan N that could make sense for certain people where you have a little bit more copay, et etc. But the end result is A, B, supplement, and then you still have to buy a prescription drug plan or get penalized. Even though you don't use medications, 8 out of 10 people I speak with aren't using medications, and they get frustrated that they have to buy a Part D prescription drug plan. Why is that? The answer is when Congress put it together, they wanted the ones that don't use medicine to help pay for the ones that do. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. kind of the way it's yours. So is United Health through ARP where there's no fee? Is that not happening? Is it, it is happening. Yes, we're getting oh. there. And you asked okay. a good question. You're just a little bit ahead of me. Okay. <laughs> All right. So A, B, Plan G, we'll call it now. That's the most popular. And this is based on age, so they do go up every year, and pretty substantially. By the time you're at age, I've got more than a dozen clients over age 80, and the plan G for them, or F, is usually over 300 a month. And normally they've got some medical conditions that makes it tricky to switch to a different Medicare supplement. So why I like to educate people about this is because it's coming as you get older. These rates are going to go up, and you can do something now or later, but 
Um, so your premium plus your prescription drug plan, that can run anywhere from 10 to $100 a month depending on the plan that you have. Blue Cross has plans. Their cheapest one now is $85 a month and it's not that much better than some of the $20 plans. Mm -hmm. How do they come up with pricing on these things? Lord only knows. Uh, <laughs> there's, I've heard formulas, but they're not real logical. So the end result is... Excuse um, me, John, I have to go. So okay, well, to thank you. you. We'll All talk. Right. We can set an individual yeah. appointment if you like. Okay. All right. Thanks for coming back. Yeah. If anyone needs a pad and paper to take notes, we have a whole bunch over here. So just let me know. Yeah, okay. And so A, B, D, the prescription drug plan. Now we're looking at 100, 120, 100. So let's talk about $1,500 a year and then going up each year. So in five years, you pay, we'll call it eight to $9,000 in premium. That's for sure going out of your pocket. Plus you got a $200 deductible for part B. That's another thousand. So now we're looking, <clears throat> I'm going to call it $10,000 you're spending on premium if you're with a supplement and a drug plan. So is there some more efficient way to do it? And the answer is now we can look at Part C. What's that? That's a Medicare Advantage that's going to give you all the benefits of A and B, but you're going to have more cost sharing. So it's kind of like comparing an all-you-can-eat buffet with your Plan G. You pay your premium, the 110, 20, whatever, based on your age and then all you can eat. Basically all the medical services you want pretty much anywhere you want to go. People like that and they can afford it, but it does get more expensive. And then uh, the other side is the cafeteria plan where you pick and choose what you want. And that's more like the Medicare Advantage where you've got, <clears throat> and I'll show you that now unless you have another question on the supplement. We'll transition. All right, so let me back up. Each year these change somewhat, and we have a new contender in competition for our Jefferson County this year in this Blue Cross. They haven't been in the Medicare Advantage field for the last 15 years, and they should have been, but they, they're finally getting into it. But the end result, why even look at a Medicare Advantage? The answer is there's no additional premium other than your Medicare Part B. So off the top, you're saving anywhere from 110 to maybe $200 a month or even more, depending on your supplement cost and drug cost, that's back in your pocket, starting right out of the gate. And some other benefits, the government controls both. So they can support supplements by not increasing the co-pays and deductibles on Medicare each year as much, which causes your supplement to go up, or they can support Medicare Advantage by offering more benefits, less risk, lower out of pocket, higher dental vision hearing benefits. They can do either one. Right now they're leaning to Medicare Advantage. And again, I can't tell you why. But my job is to help educate people and let them make an informed decision. So uh, we've got United Healthcare, which is the largest. And this year in our training, they're focusing on the right elements. They realize how frustrating it is for someone to have to wait on the phone. And to their benefit, they spent a lot of money to reduce that period of time. And the way they did it was they hired people overseas in India and in Puerto Rico that did speak, I think, reasonably good English. So they didn't have to wait as long, but they're still a problem. They're not local and they understand that. But then again, when you're trying to um, work all things into it, and the cost involved, they're now realizing it's important to have local and they're spending quite a bit of money to have local people answer the phone, local meaning in the U.S. and ideally they're even going to get it regionally, they're working on that now. So that's important. And I made a huge complaint. Um, whenever a claim is denied, they send this big red 
big black letters, you've been denied. <laughs> and I tell people that goes right to somebody's heart and tells them they're worthless. <laughs> That's what it's like. If you've ever been rejected at a, for a bank loan or whatever, what's the likelihood you're going to go back to that bank and do any more business? People hate rejection, and according to some Ayurvedic and other medical ideas, uh, the greatest stresses to the heart are uh, rejection, uncertainty, and disappointment. Rejection is right there. Mm -hmm. So is there anything worse you could do than reject someone that's trusted you to, to pay for them? You can't. So I'm working on them and asking them, <laughs> please don't use that word. Just say, um, we've looked at the information and based on the criteria, you don't quite qualify for benefit at this time, but there's other ways to that you can resolve this. Check with your doctor and see if they build it right. But please don't use big black letters rejected. So th that's one. And there's hundreds of other things too. Customer service, the waiting time, that they understand that has to be shortened. Because you call up the company and that's the face of the company, and whatever that person's doing, you take as an example of what the company's like. So they're working on it, they're spending a lot of money on it, and so are the other companies, their competitors. Aetna, as you can see here, they're gonna have uh, very similar, no um, premium, and Humana also, no premium. Wellmark has a plan, but no premium. And the out-of-pockets for most are gonna be very similar. They're gonna be around 3,700 to 4,700. Aetna is a little bit higher on the out-of-pocket maximum, but they offer some other fringe benefits on some of the ancillary services. Their dental is a reimbursement plan that's slightly better than UHC, but um, as a general rule, I find United Healthcare is probably going to be, for most people, going to uh, the most competitive, but I can't make blanket statements because each person's different. We have to look at an individual circumstance before we can determine what's in their best interest. Um, now, what else I want to show you here? Looking at the different plans and premiums in Jefferson County, there's uh, 13 or 14 to choose from. Uh, but let me go into more specifics. Um, let's see if I have it. Yeah, I do. Okay, this was my uh, training for 2000. 22 plans. United Healthcare realized that it's complicated to have one card for the medical and another card for extra benefits and another card for something else. So they finally combined all of the different cards and put it into one, which is really a help. And they're also letting you take that card. I believe you can even shop for food. Is that right, Arnie? Mm -hmm. And you don't have to figure it out. When they scan it, they'll know if there are any mm -hmm. items that uh, qualify and you get a, a, a deal. So it's either 40 or $60 every three months on ancillary benefits that would include uh, health-related items. It could include bandages or scales. It could include uh, food even food. now. They consider nutritious food. They're right. starting to pay for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gummy vitamins? They do have a lot of vitamins. They're, I don't know about organic, mm -hmm. but they're the generic vitamins. And I did see some organic. So the over-the-counter. The over-the-counter over medicine, yeah. scales, uh, bandages. But the vitamins are included there. The vitamins, yes. So they do have those things. Mm -hmm. So that's a benefit. And then they have different plans in different parts of Iowa. Let me go to, we need greater Iowa. That's what I wanted. So. Let me get this big enough so we can see it. Uh, right there. Part damn it, I had to get over here so I could get the right button to click on. You want that bigger. Uh, okay, I'll go to Okay. Can people see that now? Mm -hmm. Better? Alright. So this is something called an HMO. There are two this year, one with no premium, one with $36. And the difference is the $36 one includes dental, 
and a little bit lower out of pocket and some of the co-pays are a little bit lower. You get $1,000 worth of dental benefit, comprehensive, versus $500 of preventative over here, no premium. Now, HMO, most people have heard really bad things about HMO and some of it's justified where you go to the wrong doctor, you don't have any coverage. With Medicare Advantage, Congress did a good thing and they passed a rule that anytime anything is an emergency, everywhere you go is gonna be a network. They cannot discriminate on an emergency basis. You're gonna get the best rate possible. So, however, you do have to stay in network or you have no coverage. Uh, United Healthcare is not yet affiliated with Mayo Clinic. So if you wanna to go to Mayo Clinic, you'd wanna be on a PPO instead of an HMO. HMO does include Jefferson County Hospital, it does include University of Iowa, it does include Mercy. For most people, that's plenty adequate. Hmm. Uh, uh, there can be some exceptions, in which case we need to look at a PPO instead. Now, Can you say what that is, uh, PPO? Yeah, thank you. HMO, Health Maintenance Organization, Point of Service. Health Maintenance Organizations means you're required to go in network. Point of service means they make exceptions, sometimes you don't. <laughs> that's just complicated, but that's how, what it means. And then um, PPO means preferred provider organization. It means you can go anywhere. Any doctor you want to go to, if they're in network, you get a better deal. Uh, so you, you're not limited. Like the HMO, you, as I say, you cannot go to Mayo Clinic. Under both PPO plans, is lower price? Pardon me? PPO is lower price? Yes, they do and we'll take a look. So, <clears throat> HMO, now again, coverage differences, and let me just quickly go over some of the highlights on the coverage. So, we're looking, um, that's the PP, uh, the HMO, 3,900 versus 37. Uh, see, a, a doctor, Five dollar copay. I mean, you can see a doc ten doctor visits. You're paying fifty bucks. Most people aren't complaining on that. <clears throat> a specialist, no referrals required. That means you can go see your dermatologist or um, a gynecologist as a specialist. You don't have to get a referral. You just go to them, and as they're in the network, you pay forty dollars. Um, and then, uh, if you're, well, what about if you had surgery? And the answer is, you get a, excuse me, a really good deal. And let me get over here, I can see. Worst case for outpatient surgery is gonna be $375. And you can spend 10 or $20,000 on outpatient surgery today in the hospital, and they limit your cost to $375. And if you're, if there's reason, most people don't go with this, and I'm not sure it's the most cost effective. Um, because you're paying 36 a month, that's over $400 a year, and I'm not 100% sure it's worth it. But back over here, um, so the hospital, and I wanted to see hospital inpatient. Yeah, it's 375 per day, so you get COVID, you're in the hospital for 30 days. Can anyone here guarantee me that's not gonna happen to them? No, we, it's probably not, very unlikely, but, if it happens, wouldn't you want to be have some pretty good coverage? So what happens if that happens? You got a half a million dollar medical bill waiting. The answer is 375 for five days, and that's an emergency. You can go anywhere you want, even Mayo Clinic in that case, because it's an emergency, and you're paying 1875 dollars. You've got a half a million dollar medical expense. You're paying 1875. In my opinion, that's pretty good coverage. And then, what about hip surgery? You need to get a hip replaced, and it takes maybe three days, maybe four days in the hospital. So again, 375, 15, maybe 1800 bucks for a hip replacement. That normally doesn't happen very often. <laughs> maybe once in your lifetime, maybe twice, but it's rare. And the way I look at this is, even if under, under normal circumstances, as opposed to paying eight to ten thousand dollars in premium over a five-year period, if you're using this, and we can look at both sides of it, because if you do have some medical conditions coming up that are going to require surgery, we can sort of game the system. That's where my 
uh, expertise comes in. We'll figure out, well, no, you need to be on a supplement for a while. <coughs> get a whole bunch of testing, get a couple of surgeries, get all that out of the way, and then we'll come back to the Medicare Advantage and save some money. So there, there are some choices that you have here, but the end result is Medicare Advantage, over a five-year period, the vast majority of people are going to spend less than two or three thousand dollars on various outpay, on various uh, copays, maybe some deductibles, compared with spending eight to ten thousand dollars in premium on a five-year period. And in addition to that, to get dental vision and hearing with a supplement, you have to pay for it. it could run, depending on the dental plan, thirty to fifty dollars depending upon the vision plan, 10 to 20, and the hearing plan, another 10 to 20. So about $50 in benefits per month average, you get at no extra cost with a Medicare Advantage. And most people aren't using the dental, and that has been frustrating for me as an agent because over the last five years, they do keep getting better, but when it started five years ago, no out-of-network dentists were covered, and there weren't many in Fairfield. Uh, two years ago, they started covering um, out-of-network dentists, but they don't pay as much. Now they're getting to where they're going to pay about as much, even if you're in an out-of-network dentist. So it's all improving, thank goodness. Yes? What does uh, POS stand for? Proof of State? Point of State. <laughs> Proof of State. Yeah. Uh, Preferred. Point, point of Service. Point of service. And it's the terminology, the jargon, medical and insurance. And what it means is, HMO, you're locked in, can't go out of network. Point of service means there are specific doctors that are, out, that are out of network, but you can still go to as if they're in network. Why do they do that? Why do they make it as complicated? They do, that's how it is. So it's better than having an HMO altogether, but it's not the same as a PPO. Preferred provider network takes it another level to where you can go to any doctor. It's just get better deals when they're in network. And most of the doctor, all of the doctors at Jefferson County Hospital at the University of Iowa and Mercy are considered in network. So that makes it pretty easy. Now, I've gone on a huge bit of information. Bear with me for another five minutes. We're going to get through the PPO. Then I'll answer, happy to answer questions. Would that be all right? Okay. HMO, one and two, most people choose the zero deductible. It does not have a medical deductible. The PPO, they came out with a, a new plan this year. It's a PPO that does not have a medical deductible. We got a lot of complaints. People got hit with the medical deductible. And even though I did my best to explain it, um, you can't predict, no one can predict medical occurrences that can just come up random. It happens to all of us. And then, for example, the medical deductible under this plan, which also comes with it a $1,000 medical uh, dental benefit. That's why I signed up for it. Um, uh, to me, the 1000 in dental is a burden the hand and the pocket because I'm going to use that pretty much every year compared to a burden the bush. Uh, this has no deductible, medical deductible, but I'm not likely to go to the hospital, and it's only 500 in dental, 100 in vision. This gives 1,000 dental and uh, 300 for vision. I like to get the new glasses. I'm starting to find my eyes they, they like new glasses. Um, so that swung me over it, but it's not right for everyone. A lot of people don't want to have that $1,000 over their head where they might hit it. And now they've given you a choice, you can get rid of it. And what it means is the out-of-pocket's the same. You're gonna have a $5 copay at the doctor instead of zero, that's not so bad. 45 instead of 30 at a specialist, that's not too bad. 390 for five days instead of 250 for, for six days. 250 times six is 1,500. 390 times five, so about 1800 or so. So that's a little bit higher, but are you likely to go to the hospital? That's an issue. Um, the outpatient hospital, 390 maximum. 
compared to 300. So there's not a whole lot of it. Telehealth is the same. Telehealth is amazing. So let's say it's the winter in Iowa. It's cold. And it's dark. And the last thing you do, it's a weekend. You do not want to get out of the house, but you got this cold, and you don't know if it's COVID. You're starting to cough. And, uh, you, you try all the organic things over to everybody's. They taste great, but it didn't work. Now your cough is still just there. What are you going to do? Well, the answer is you get on your computer and you go to mwell.com, push a button, and you're talking face to face with a doctor. So you could think, well, wow, uh, this is pretty nice. This is on the phone, though, not, not the computer. You can do it on your computer and okay. see them. If you have a smartphone, you can do it. You can do a phone call, but most people like a video. Now, I've done it several times, and you get amazing doctors. <laughs> and they're very experienced. I had one that was an administrator for three hospitals in Cleveland, Ohio. I don't know why. I guess United Healthcare pays a lot of money to take calls. I don't know. But he's, <laughs> he's there. And we had a video chat. And I asked him some other questions. And he didn't want to get into politics. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it was a fun little time. Uh, so that's a. Who was which? Is he a Republican and you or whatever? Uh, no, we're, I'm neutral. <laughs> uh, he was pretty neutral. Anyway, so the end result is, um, oh, what am I looking at? This is Quad Cities. Just a minute. Uh, my, I don't know. It's going to be the same, I think, regardless of where we, which one we're on. Yeah, let me go back. Greater Iowa plan. That's where I want to be. Uh, but I don't think there's any difference at all. Uh, and this this is kind of a nice benefit, this $40 or $60. So um, the one with the 1,000 medical deductible, you get 60 every three months as opposed to 40. But that card, now that you don't have to figure out, you just show up and have them scan it at Hy-Vee or scan it at uh, wherever you're shopping. I think even Walmart will work. It does not? Mm. Well, this not, is not in Fairfield. It's just over the phone. You can order through the catalog over the phone. I think it's going to change year. next year. Next year, oh. everything changes. Yeah. Oh, good. It's a very good change. <laughs> calendar year change? Pardon me? Calendar year? Yes, January the 1st, yeah. effective, it changes. Mm -hmm. And then your card will work. So you just shop and scan it. They said that's really important benefit for consumers because too many people are having to call in and figure out the cards and they so don't they have to do that. So they carry a $60 limit. $60 limit, yes. Right. And if you just use it or lose it, every three yeah, months, right. you got to be on top of it. Not we do it by mail. Uh -huh. Okay, well it'll be easier from now on. Yeah. Okay, um, now I think I've covered most everything. But they do send a notice every three months, right? Yeah, they notify you, yeah. That's they right. sent the nurse, and last year they gave us a $50 gift certificate for seeing it. This oh. year it went down to five. Oh, oh shoot. <laughs> Wait, at the end of the year, last year they offered me 75 or 75 Oh my God, they tried like, to buy you out yeah, they were. to come to your home. So yeah. Medicare incentive incentivizes yeah. United Healthcare to do home care visits. Mm -hmm. The reason being, there's some chronically ill people that aren't managing their affairs well, and it costs them a lot of money when they have to go to the hospital yeah, that yeah. it could have been prevented. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they yeah, thought yeah. it makes sense it's to just show one. up. Yeah. And for those that have had a home health visit, was it fairly pleasant or was it unpleasant? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's pleasant. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, they should keep that 25 or whatever, 50. But anyway, I, we'll see what happens. Uh, but it, 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 and I've had dozens of people call me, John, is this a scam? They want to come to my house? I said, no, it's not. It's legit. And they will ask some questions, but it's for your benefit. They're trying to see if there's some things that can be managed more efficiently. If you need transportation to the drugstore or the doctor, we'll arrange it. If you need a, a personal advocate to help you manage your medications or whatever, we'll arrange it. And that is important. Some people do need somebody to talk to. It could prevent depression and all the complications of that, it can, there's a lot of benefits you can have just by having attention with certain people that need it. So that's all there. Now, I, uh, let's go into questions. Other questions? Well, the telehealth 
but that's only for uh, a specialist's cost something, right? The specialist, uh, instead of 30 with your plan with a deductible, if you want a plan with no deductible, you pay 45 for a specialist. For the telehealth. Oh, right? telehealth. Yeah. Uh, it says zero, but it's not really true. When you go to the website to pick a doctor, if it's a dermatologist or something, a specialist. it actually costs something. It didn't clarify it. Yeah. If it's a regular primary visit, it's no charge. Right. But most of the time, people do want to see a specialist. So they should put that on there. They should. The brochure. These German girls, they're right on top of it. see everything. Uh, yeah, they missed it. OK, I can make a note to remind them. Any other things they missed? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, on the brochure that they send out, uh -huh. they say that the imaging, you know, radiology, like the x-rays and the MRIs, they only, the MRIs only $145 um, um, co-payment. Oh, but they should put next to it after the thousand dollar deductible is met. <laughs> I've been nailed on that too many times. Yeah. No, they did it. How many else? Has anyone else had it? That deductible incurred when they weren't expecting it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> they really need to figure. And that's yeah. That's the, why the simple solution is well, okay. Just choose a plan that doesn't have a medical deductible. You're given that choice. Otherwise, the things that are not making common sense, but they, the deductible does apply. Um, so yes, what you had, but there's some other things. There's um, certain types of outpatient x-rays I think the deductible may apply to, which are, didn't make any sense to me. And the <coughs> other things, um, deductible, it does, colonoscopies will not incur the deductible. Those are whether it's diagnostic or not. We had problems with that two years ago, and they cleared that up. And what else could incur the deductible? Um, in outpatient, of course. Hospital, of course. Um, physical therapy. No, I, no deductible. Oh, good. Thanks. But a co-payment. OK, well, that, that's better than a deductible. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, other questions? What is this in other benefits? You have meal benefits. What is that? The forty or sixty dollar benefit that you oh, get. Oh, and about them. Um, it will include food after a, oh, after after a, a hospital, hospital stay. stay. Ah, that's yeah. good. They will yeah. cover meals. Uh, they most people, most towns in the United States have them. Meal, meals on Wheels, oh, that's a circumstance is similar to that, where they'll pay and bring food to you, which is helpful if you're just coming out of surgery. Oh, yeah. Do you know if that's in here? Do they? Do they have Meals on Wheels in here? I've seen it advertised and seen it in the source. I don't know how active it is. I, th I think through the, uh, through the senior center there was, there was something. I'm not sure how. There's a meal train I see advertised, too. Sometimes people... It's private, yeah. Other questions? So Medicare Supplement, Medicare Advantage, which is right for you, it's an individual consideration. There's no blanket answer. And what I offer is a free consultation. If you're already a client, happy to visit with you. Level four. Oh, level four. Okay. Good question. Sharing. So dental under the PPO plan with the medical deductible, level four dental means comprehensive. They're going to cover root canals and crowns and caps. Under level two dental, it means they're uh, only preventative, uh, and, although and, fillings, and, and, fillings. and a filling. Yeah. But you won't get a root canal, a crown, cap and some of the other major services. But with the $500 one, you do have the option to do the rider, and you can get... You can buy a rider for about $39 30. per month. Right. That bumps it up to either $1,000 or $1,500, do you know? Um, I think it might be $1,500. Yeah. 
I'd have to check. We'll have to check on yeah. 2022. So yeah. if you're willing to pay an extra 30, 40, that's almost $480 a year to get $1,500 as opposed right, to it 500. Work that's a rip off. <laughs> you tried. Okay, good. We had some experience here. You now, uh, uh, what I got a question is uh, hearing aid. You've mentioned, uh, I don't know where that falls in. Under the both hearing. plans, yes. Both plans? We'll cover hearing aids, and they're getting better. Uh, United Healthcare, they're buying out health and, uh, hearing aid uh, companies that are located pretty much in every state and almost in every city. And they're they're just buying the company, so they become part of United Healthcare. And if you go, what's considered in network, you get it as low as 175 per device, and that's 350 total for what could be. And I called them up and I said, you know, Costco's got a really good plan for like 1,700 bucks. Uh, what is your uh, plan that you make in house there for 175 dollars? Yes, 350. How is that going to compare with the $1,500 Costco hearing aids? And the guy said, well, they're better. I said, oh, they can't be better. Well, that's what he told me. And I don't know if it's true or not, but um, I can't give you an opinion. I did get uh, some hearing aids myself. I don't even use them because I don't need them that much, but it is delightful. You hear things you didn't know you were missing. <laughs> And just like a surgery for you. Yes. But there's, a, you know, there's a benefit not to have a good <laughs> okay. Or selective yeah. hearing. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't call it selective. You just, I yeah. just don't hear anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. So, so what do they, in a dental, go, going back to dental, mm -hmm. what is it that means? No, sh no sharing? It says? Oh, uh, they got rid of the deductible and co-pays if you're in network. So that means uh, you could easily use up your thousand dollars whereas before with deductibles and co-pays it made it more difficult to spend all the money. Absolutely. So now uh, if they're out of network and my dentist is out of network but they're still paying and the advantage for example with United Healthcare versus Aetna United Healthcare will cover something called an occlusal guard. Does anyone here grind their teeth at night and the dentist said, no, you need to put something in? No. Well, I didn't know I was doing it, but they oh. he said, no, John, there's some flaking there. You better try this occlusal guard. So they, and he, they spent thousands of dollars to get this machine that creates an occlusal guard and they use a, a 3D printer to mm -hmm. print it. It's yeah. very sophisticated. So. The lady had this laser that was mapping out my teeth, and then um, about four weeks later, I get an occlusal guard that's so solid, I asked him, well, gee whiz, I could drive my car with this thing. He said, no, don't do that. But, uh, <laughs> it's really hard, firm. Carbon it, fiber. Yeah, uh, but it feels okay. I don't know what it is, but it's translucent, and you just put it in, and... Uh, it's not carbon fiber. Yeah, my daughter saw me the first day and said, Dan, you got false teeth. I said, no, no, I'm just using my occlusal card. So I use it at night, and I do wake up. I think it's an improvement. I don't feel any soreness in my gums. But back to the coverage, uh, Aetna did not cover it at all, whereas United Healthcare did, and out of, I think it was 800 bucks I spent for it, they paid about 380 well, it's better than not getting anything. And so that's what I experienced. And even the dentist said, John, it's very unusual for a company to cover this occlusal guard. I didn't know any of them did. I said, well, here's the proof. Mm -hmm. um, so so yes. what about medical tests like an EEG or? CAT scans, MRIs trigger the deductible. So if you're thinking you're gonna have some of those, you may want to shift to the plan that doesn't have a medical deductible. So a CAT scan and an MRI, let's figure out how much that would cost you. So lab copay. Labs, that's not talking about radiological types of things that trigger that deductible. Uh, it may not be on the, this one. It's not on that page. Uh, but 
My guess is it's under $200, but I don't have to guess. I'm an insurance agent. I shouldn't be guessing. Let me go to summary of benefits here for 2022, or do we have them? Honey, have we gotten into catalogs yet? Yeah. Um, HMO, POS, here's one. Those are in the other one that we have to make sure. This is, yeah, 2022. I'll be able to tell you what a MRI will cost if you go with the one that has the thousand dental and the medical deductible, you could end up paying eight hundred bucks or more. Well, it's you have to pay the thousand dollars. Oh, you it hit yeah, the whole thousand. Like, oh, yeah. It's like fifteen hundred. Oh, but so after the thousand, then it goes to the copay. Right. Of maybe and the, 150. the same thing with the X-ray. X-ray costs two hundred ninety-five dollars out of the deductible. Because it hit the deductible. Yeah, it hit the deductible. And oh, after, okay. after that, it's ten. Yeah, that's where the shock comes. You, you, yes. you know you have it, but you know when all of a sudden, yeah. <laughs> there's the bill. Yeah. That's how much you owe. Why? Yeah, why? Exactly. And here's she called. She said, "Well, that's a deductible." So yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, so from now on, I got a free ride. Okay. <laughs> so with the cardiologist, EKG is that? Deductible? Or yeah, almost for sure it's going to be deductible. And let's see what you pay for it. This is the, the HMO, HMO plan two and the and then you PPO, got the PPO plan, plan Perfect. Two. Thanks, Ronnie. All right, so we are looking at <clears throat> diagnostic radiology services such as MRIs and CAT scans would be a maximum of $145 under the HMO and under the PPO. A hundred and fifty. So no difference. well after the deductible. No. Uh, no deductible yeah. if you choose the PPO with the no de oh, deductible. Oh I see. So the disadvantage again on choosing the PPO without a medical deductible, you have a little bit high, higher copays for outpatient hospital, a specialist, and some other things, but th that's not a whole lot of dollars compared to having a thousand. So I, I have a hunch I'm going to have people wanting to switch to the PPO that does not have a medical deductible mm -hmm. this year, and okay. you'll have that choice. So if you choose to come in, it won't cost you anything. Uh, we'll get you in an appointment. You just come in, we'll go over your circumstances in particular, and see does it make sense to get rid of this deductible, and we, we can. And in certain circumstances, if you're thinking there might be a hip surgery or some other things uh, for a particular year, I'll see, we can even consider getting you on a supplement. So you've eliminated all of the out-of-pockets and then maybe later go back on to the Medicare Advantage. That's the very individual circumstance. We have to look at your, yeah. So we can switch until October 18th? Or? From October the 15th until December the 7th, you may switch oh. from one plan to the next. That's called the annual election period and then they confuse that because there's an open enrollment period that starts January the 1st through March 31st, where if you already have a Medicare Advantage plan, you can change. They had to do that because so many people were signing up for Medicare HMOs, and then they're finding later their doctor's not in the network. So then in January, they, well, that's all right, we'll go to a different one that has a doctor in the network. So in January, you cannot buy a Medicare Advantage plan unless you're in turning 65 basically but you can change one and the rules they just keep coming out with these rules and that's how that works so for your purposes um, it would be October 15th until December the 7th Sylvie <coughs> to know what the premiums are going to be the changes the premiums have been zero for the last 12 years and I expect they'll be zero going forward Unless some Congress change it. No, there's, right now they're favoring Medicare Advantage. I don't see a change. I don't expect you'll have premiums. And there is one that has a premium of $36, but I don't know that it makes sense to pay it. So, 
How are you going to use that card in Walmart? You show, you scan it. You know, when you're uh, mm -hmm. scanning your credit card. Okay. Now, at least that's what they're that's telling what they me. Said. Yeah. You do you the same it. thing. So you do your credit card, mm -hmm. but you also either scan it or put it in. I'm mm -hmm. not sure. I haven't used it yet. It'll be fun to see. Should should be easier. And then well, you it, do, it doesn't look like it has a chip, so you cannot put it. No. Oh. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not quite sure. It might be the maybe they scan it like when they're scanning the groceries. Walmart doesn't have that capability yet for scanning the card. Oh, I. Well, you, you stopped me. <laughs> I can't. Well, tell it's you. got a barcode on the bottom, yeah. so but maybe it you might can, be. It's, yeah. Yeah, you just swipe it. Mm -hmm. Swipe yeah, it. Swipe. That could be. Yeah. Well, the, the boss is going to figure out that. <laughs> and you don't have to buy it all sixty dollars at once. No, no. You go and you buy today. You buy vitamin tomorrow. I buy something else. Yes. Until it's all done. John, did you want to mention that um, for people who are on Medicaid that we have special uh, advantage? If there is anyone can... here that is on low-income Medicaid, there's some special advantages, and we do need to spend some time together. Mm -hmm potential to get rid of your Medicare Part B premium, and there's potential to get something called a dual eligible plan that eliminates the co-pays and deductible at the doctor's office. Right. And a lot more benefits as far as and over the counter. And some other benefits. The dental goes up to 3,000 in benefits. There's quite a number of benefits right. to right. those that qualify. You do have to qualify. It means you need to go over to the Department of Human Services and fill out a form and they check your assets and make sure that you qualify. But we're happy to help those people right. too. They need help. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Other questions? I've kept you a long time. <laughs> I wish I had some big prize I could give you. I, actually, I can't. Medicare. Now, I gave a, a talk earlier where they don't have rules about me being able to give away things, so I could do that. Medicare, the rules are uh, you cannot ha offer a meal. You could offer a few pieces of fruit. <laughs> How does that, what does that have to do with anything? Uh, you cannot offer any gifts of cash value. Um, and if it's, if they do find that you've offered something that could be convertible to cash or uh, something worth more than $15 in actual value, you lose your license. I'm thinking, oh, oh wow. so they, they think it's going to bribe <laughs> your customers. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, that's they don't no, want to bribe your No, no meals, no, no big meals. <laughs> so anyway, but uh, this, I just follow the rules. Uh, all right. Uh, Deborah actually has my calendar, so if any of you would like to schedule an appointment and you don't want to have to play phone tag, yeah. because sometimes... <laughs> <laughs> Although you can still ask. <laughs> So, um, I, as I mentioned, Deborah does have a calendar, and we can schedule you. If you want an appointment, I'm delighted to meet with you. That's what I do. And if you're already pretty confident in what you want, you're happy with what you have, you don't even need to meet. But most people, I think, are probably going to want to discuss the new PPO without a deductible, or they might have some other questions. I'm, as I say, I'm delighted to meet with you. And uh, any other questions? Nope. <laughs> Thanks very much for coming. Okay. Appreciate your time. Okay. And, uh, so you don't have to wear a phone tag. Deborah can. Yeah. So if anybody, an if anybody, if you need to think about it, you can call in. But if you want to set something up, if you have any questions that you just want to ask John in private about anything, financial, estate planning, Medicare, different plans, what's best for you, you know, just let me know, and I can put you in here on the calendar, pencil you in. And what else? Um, thank you, everyone, for coming. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And tell your friends that John has all the answers. So <laughs> send them oh, to us. <laughs> I know where to look for the answers. Yeah. <laughs> that I can do. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thanks for coming. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah. bye. bye. Enjoy your bye -bye. day, everybody. I do have a lot of Zoom meetings with people. Let me ask you. Especially I've got.
clients that are here. How do Fairfield or Ohio State have to do this? Well, it's very well. It's convenient. So do you have a Medicare plan? No. No, I can't.